Hey there, Justin Cook with Critical Points. I wanted to talk about using bedside ultrasound to look for pneumothorax, and I find this exam pretty helpful in the undifferentiated dysmic patient who um, you're going to order a chest x-ray on anyway, but I get this information from ultrasound much faster than I, I can get even the fastest portable chest x-ray. I think it's also handy in the situation where you're looking for, say, a post-procedure pneumothorax and some misadventure of a central line. Hopefully that never happens. But it's got a bunch of applications, and this is really what it looks like. Now, this, of course, is my chest, maybe after three or four passes with an epilady because I'm part chia pet. But at any rate, what you use is a linear probe that you orient longitudinally, so in the long plane of the body, looking in about three inner spaces on each side. So we're trying to get in between ribs to look down into the pleura and see the pleura sliding. And that pleural sliding is really the critical thing to identify when we're doing this exam. The other thing you want to keep in mind is the ultrasound is going to be lurking in the place that's the most high in altitude on the chest. So with somebody sitting supine like this, or lying supine, it'll probably be located around here where this guy's chest has got the highest peak, whereas if he's sitting up a little bit, it'd probably be more towards the apex. And that should be the area of focus for your ultrasound examination because that's going to be the most high-yield spot to find a pneumothorax in most cases. So again, we're using the linear probe and orienting it longitudinally. You find the highest altitude point of the chest and scan there, but also scan three images, um, three interspaces bilaterally to increase your sensitivity and your yield. And you're really scanning on both sides because you want to have a comparison. This is what it looks like on the other side. So we're looking for the rib shadows, and then what we're trying to identify, as I said, is this pleura, which will show up as this bright white linear surface linear structure that will have some sliding. So the presence of sliding is normal. And as opposed to say the FAST exam where the presence of a hypoechoic or dark structure represents fluid and that's bad, this is a little different conceptually because it's the absence of a finding, namely this pleural sliding, that is abnormal as opposed to the presence of say blood in the abdomen that's the abnormal finding. So we're looking for this pleural sliding and we want to confirm that it's present. And we call this pleural sliding a couple different names to maybe make it more memorable. We call it comma tails or beads on a string or we call it the sliding lung sign. There are a bunch of other names for it. But if you don't see that, that's suggestive of a pneumothorax. So I can talk about this for hours, but what you really need to do is know what this looks like. So here is a rib shadow right there. And we look to the side of the rib. There's another rib shadow over on this side. We see this bright white line and we see it sliding back and forth a little bit and we see maybe a couple of bright white round things that occasionally show some deep uh, artifact that's kind of this comet tail that we talk about. So we call it beads on a string or this comet tail artifact, the sliding lung sign, and that's normal. We want to see that. And I apologize for this line right here. This is because I pressed the M mode button once, and we'll talk about M mode in a second because I think that's really helpful in giving a little bit more sensitivity to this exam. Compare that to a person with a pneumothorax. Now, this actually happens to be the same guy. This is his left side, and this is his right side. Eh, I got that backwards. But anyway, this guy got a pneumothorax from a misadventure with a subclavian line, which I was not a part of. But nonetheless, I jumped on the case to <laughs> do some ultrasound and record it. Um, I had this guy take a bunch of really terribly deep breaths, and you can see his chest wall bowing tremendously as he's doing that. Of course, I didn't have him do it when I was scanning this side because I didn't need to, but I just wanted to demonstrate that this guy has no sliding of his lung here at all. We don't see any of this bright white line here showing any artifact that looks anything like what we have on this side. Now again, I think this is why it's important to scan both sides to compare. But what's going on is basically because this guy has no lung immediately under the pleural surface, there's no artifact that we're seeing. There's no um, ultrasound sort of generated artifact that would be representing somebody's pleura sliding against one another. And so this is what a pneumothorax looks like on ultrasound. Okay, so I'll admit that those last images were not entirely satisfying in saying that you could securely differentiate pneumothorax from non-pneumothorax or normal lung. So let me give you another tool to make you a little more secure about this. We can use M-Mode. M-Mode is a way of looking at the ultrasound data as a strip of data that is um, vertical across the screen, so top to bottom, looking at a small stripe of that image over time. So we use the same probe, the same approach. We try and put the ultrasound probe in exactly the same location we were in before. We press the M-Mode button a couple times, and it basically gives us a new representation of that data. And so in this case, a normal finding, we call the seashore sign, or, or see over the sand. So what we should see is this kind of linear artifact on the top of the screen, or the near field, and this granularity in the bottom part of the screen, or far field. 
And I'll tell you what that represents in a second. The abnormal finding, or the pneumothorax, it'll be linear everywhere. So let's see what that looks like. And the way I remember this is I got to be a simpleton about this. The complex physics eludes me at the bedside when somebody's critically ill. And so what I need to think to myself is, do I want to be lost at sea? Or do I want to be hanging out on the beach with a drink with a little umbrella in it? I want to be on the beach. I don't want to be lost at sea. So if I see the sea everywhere, that's bad. If I'm on the beach, that's good. Here's what it looks like. I hit my MO button a couple of times. It gives me a linear representation of just this data, top to bottom, and I'm looking at it over time. And so this bright white thing is the pleural interface, and what's above it is basically chest wall, and what's below it is lung stuff. I clearly see that there's linearity on top, and there's granularity on the bottom, and this is the patient's normal side, and that's what we see in a normal lung exam. This is the seashore sign. So compare that to the pneumothorax. This guy has linearity top and bottom. You know, this is just waves everywhere, I'm lost at sea. And if you really want to know the mechanics behind why this happens, the best I can explain it is we're looking at movement over time. So if the chest wall is stationary with respect to the probe, and if you're doing a good job holding the probe on somebody's chest and stabilizing the probe with your hand against their chest, you're not going to see any kind of change in the data that you're seeing. This stuff, all these structures are static with respect to the probe, so you just get this linearity. Nothing's moving. Whereas lung and pleura and all that stuff immediately below what you're looking at, assuming that there's no interposed airspace between the pleura, uh, within the pleural space to diminish your image quality, that's going to give you this kind of random movement of stuff below it. Well, not really random, but just movement that gives you artifact down here, gives you this granularity. Whereas if you have a pneumothorax, I mean, what's really happening here is there's some kind of air between the parietal pleura and the visceral pleura, and so that air doesn't really transmit much in the way of ultrasound information. But what you see is this kind of you know, artifact that doesn't change over time, and so that's a pneumothorax. See, you didn't really want to know that anyway. I just confused you. But anyway, just think about seashore, good, lost at sea, bad. If you're a pro, you can find the lung point sign. And so what this is is the um, inflection point of the pneumothorax. So looking at the same place, looking at between these rib interspaces and looking at the pleura, if on the same image, like within the footprint of the probe, you're seeing an area of lung sliding and then an area of no lung sliding, this is actually the margin of the pneumothorax. This is where the pleura is adjacent and then splits apart. And so this, if you find it in a couple places, can help you estimate the size of the pneumothorax. So this is what it looks like. Here's a rib shadow right here with some shadowing, uh, a rib here with some shadowing to, uh, far field to it. And then here you see some pretty cool looking comet tail artifacts coming down. You got the beads on the string going back and forth and clearly some movement. And then over here you don't see anything. And over here is probably another rib that we're not completely visualizing in this video. But this is the, uh, the point right here at which the pneumothorax separates. And so we call this the lung point. And if you find this in a given image, then you can find it maybe in another part of the chest. You can get a rough estimate of how big the pneumothorax is. I should say I'm always getting a chest x-ray when I'm doing these kinds of exams, and I'm concerned there may be a pneumothorax because this really is not going to be clinically delineating the size for me on, you know, 99% of patients. Wanted to mention briefly about pitfalls. So if someone doesn't have a normal movement to their lung, like if their lung is not ventilated, as in the case of a main stem intubation, that lack of pleural sliding means that you're not going to see what looks like normal lung to you on ultrasound. So there has to be pleural sliding for you to declare a lung to be looking normal. So know that a main stem intubation is going to look like a pneumothorax on this exam. By the same token, any sort of structural lung disease or any disease of the pleura is going to give you an abnormal appearance because the pleura is not sliding normally. And so if you've had pleuridesis, it just makes sense that if the pleural split space has been obliterated surgically, then there's no sliding to be seen. Hey, I hope this was helpful for you, and I hope you get an opportunity to try this and get more familiar with it. I think it has some great applications when that sick patient comes to your emergency room and you're trying to figure out why they're not breathing well. And um, Keep in touch. Let us know what we can do to help you learn about this stuff in other ways. Thanks a lot.